Did you know that fish, fatty fish like salmon and uh, some nuts and seeds can uh, have something, uh, have an amino acid called uh, tryptophan, which can help uh, produce serotonin in your gut and help you to deal with mood imbalances. Um, join me today for another session as I take you through six foods that I always have in my kitchen. Um, you know, the, the last one is fish, of course, uh, for those of you who don't know me. I'm a Bengali, <laughs> apart from being a certified health coach. Uh, so fish comes naturally, but there I will be giving you other options, which can help you to deal with mood imbalances, mood swings, and contribute to better mental and emotional well-being, right? So this is something that you have in your control, irrespective of what's happening in your external world. So the first thing is that most of us reach for certain foods when we are feeling low, when we are feeling lonely, when we are feeling depressed, etc. or in a you know, sad mood. Have you noticed what kind of foods you reach for at that time? If you are like most people, the foods that you reach usually would be reaching for when you are feeling low, when you are feeling upset or in a bad mood would be typically the high sugar refined carbohydrates which are typically processed and hence deficient in nutrients uh, and even might be very high in artificial flavors and colorings just aggravating the situation, right? What happens as a result of having those foods? It does give us a temporary high, it does make us feel better for a while and then there is a crash, there is a crash that follows, right? So while we intuitively know that these are foods which do not support our mental health, our mood uh, in the long run, we usually end up reaching for those foods. Today I'm here to tell you that there is an alternative and I am listing down six foods that are readily available uh, uh, and you can sort of reach for them instead. And I'll give you also the reasons why, but before that, um, if you like what I have to say, uh, I'll be sharing the link in this post. Make sure that you sign up for my newsletter because I'll be sharing tidbits and the blog post where I have uh, written all these down in details, right? So make sure that you sign up for that. So the, uh, as I mentioned that often what happens is that by reaching for certain types of foods when we are feeling low or upset or sad, typically these are not always but typically these are the high refined uh, high in sugar foods um, that help us feel better of course uh, you know i'm sure you agree with me that these kind of foods whether it's a baked food whether it's a donut or a cookie or a biscuit it makes us feel good for a while right it raises our blood sugar uh, but what happens unfortunately is soon after that the blood sugar levels go down and that's when there is a crash and we don't feel so great after that if you've paid attention to how your body feels. And then, you know, it's like kind of like a yo-yo, especially with these kind of foods, right? So the first thing is to avoid uh, these kind of foods. And I have given a list in my blog post, the link, of, link to which I'll be giving here. So these typically would be the highly processed, uh, highly refined foods, right? Um, artificial foods uh, with a lot of sugar in them. So that's the first thing, uh, just removing those foods, especially when you are going through a mood swing or a mood imbalance, etc. And even at other times as well. Now, the reason that um, certain foods make us feel good, right, especially uh, when we are emotionally going through a roller coaster kind of ride, is that they have a you know, direct effect on our brain health. We all know that, right? But you may not know how critical some of these foods are for, uh, you know, for nourishing your brain, right? Your brain is the one organ that cannot tell you how it is actually feeling um, in the sense that it is pain, etc. And a lot of times uh, it's the brain health that often goes, you know, unnoticed or uh, not taken care of, right? Because your body, uh, we have physical pain, so we often take care of that for our, for our brain, uh, because it doesn't have any pain uh, neurons, uh, pain cells to tell us uh, when it is in pain, etc., or when it's undernourished. A lot of times uh, we don't get to know until it's 
you know, there are a lot of issues that have already cropped up, etc. But I'm not getting into that here. Here, the focus is uh, just sharing with you six foods that you can start, you know, having from today, right? These are foods that I typically have in my kitchen. So the first one may surprise you. The first one is dark chocolate, right? And the reason it is dark chocolate, and I'm not, uh, notice that I'm not saying dairy milk or any uh, other kind of uh, chocolate, okay? I am talking about 75 to 80%, 85% cocoa, uh, because it's a cocoa or which comes from cacao that I'm talking about. That's, that's the key here. It's not the typical uh, milk chocolate that all of us typically have, which has a lot of sugar, which has dairy, etc. I'm talking about a dark chocolate, which is high in magnesium. Now, magnesium is uh, called the relaxation mineral. It helps uh, relax our muscles. Uh, it helps nourish our brain. Dark chocolate also contains something called theobromine, which also contributes to better mood. So, uh, and certain phytonutrients, which helps our immune function and our brain health. So dark chocolate is one thing that I would suggest. And the first thing, because, you know, it's, uh, it's a treat as well. So uh, it doesn't harm to have uh, one or two pieces of dark chocolate maybe every night before bed. Because as I mentioned, magnesium is known as a relaxation mineral uh, and it really helps to have foods high in magnesium at night to help with sleep. So that's another reason for you to have some dark chocolate every now and then, maybe even every day. The second food I would suggest is fermented foods. Now fermented foods are a staple of Indian diet. So we know about dosa, we know idli, uh, we, uh, you know, so uttapam, all the fermented uh, products, fermented pickles. So we are well aware of that. So continue having those traditional Indian foods. But what I have also shared in my blog post are foods which are much more um, nutritious in terms of good bacteria, which typically are called, which are probiotics, uh, which is there in your uh, gut, right? There's an ecosystem down there and there's a collection of good and bad bacteria, virus, fungi, etc., so this is what we are trying to feed or trying to uh, improve the health of the gut health. So fermented foods, I have shared with you uh, some options for kefir, some options for sauerkraut. These are very, very um, highly um, density, actually, I would say, of uh, good bacteria and, uh, you know, yeast, beneficial yeast, etc., which are available nowadays. And you can add that to your diet as well, apart from the other foods that you might be already having. Because of the gut-brain connection, what these uh, fermented foods does is to feed your gut microbiome, as it is called, the ecosystem, which goes on to have a calming effect on your brain. That's the connection, right? Right from the gut to the brain. That's the second option, second food. The third food would be green tea. Uh, but always keep in mind that uh, just because I'm sharing six foods doesn't mean they're only these six foods. These are foods that I typically like to have on a regular basis and I have in my kitchen. There are, of course, many other foods as well, but these are also some of them are broad categories. So they involve a lot of other, for ex uh, and I'll come to that. So green tea, coming back to green tea, green tea contains L-theanine which is an amino acid and it helps us to uh, fight anxiety and relax. So having two to three cups of your favorite green tea throughout the day can go a long way. I uh, personally like to have a cup of green tea right before bedtime. It contains a, uh, you know, a certain amount of caffeine. So if ca coffee does not suit you, then maybe uh, green tea may not be the best option. You can opt for a non-caffeine herbal tea as well. And again, there's chamomile and jasmine and many other uh, options on that front. Otherwise, uh, green tea is an excellent option to get more of L-theanine, which is, uh, again, helps in relaxation and brain. Um, the fourth option would be, uh, is the food that I want to share with you is leafy greens, which includes all your palak, methi, etc. And again, they contain a lot of nutrients. Uh, they also contain a certain amount of calcium, minerals, etc. But what I, and uh, including B vitamins, right? They also contain uh, a lot of vitamins, including B vitamins. I want to highlight one of the B vitamins. It's called folate. And what research shows us, uh, shows is that 
those typically who have mood disorders and depression are those people who have mood depression de mood disorders or depression are typically low in folate right so another reason to have your leafy greens um and to help with mood imbalances of course you also get a lot of fiber at the same time again keeping your gut happy so that's your fourth food the fifth would be nuts and seeds so that various variety of nuts and seeds like your pumpkin sunflower chia flax right and the various nuts are high in tryptophan which uh, is an amino acid and it is the precursor to one of your neurotransmitters called serotonin which is very important for um your mood right and uh, um you may not know this but 70% of the serotonin is produced in the gut okay again coming back to the same ecosystem so by consuming these foods on a regular basis you are giving a body a chance to take in absorb tryptophan and produce serotonin naturally to the extent that your body needs right without depending on any drug or medication and helping you with mood swings or imbalances or prevent them in the first place so that's nuts and seeds and then of course the nuts are also high in zinc and selenium and that can also really help nourish your brain at the same time last but not the least the food that i wanted to share with you is uh, are the fatty fish like salmon uh, one of my favorite fish you can also of course opt for other indian freshwater fish or sea water fish uh, which are very high in uh, a particular fat called omega 3 and once again uh, these kind of fish are usually high in tryptophan uh, omega 3 as i mentioned but in particular vitamin b's uh, like 12 and 6 which are all required to uh, once again produce serotonin the neurotransmitter responsible one of the neurotransmitters responsible for your mood right your happy mood and uh, i have mentioned salmon here it's tends it's one of my a uh, favorite fish um, i find that a lot of people who are not used to having fish are okay with having something like a salmon since it doesn't smell as much there is also an indian uh, version um, which is not indian version uh, indian option which is a fresh water fish called bhetki uh, which can also help i mean if you are starting off trying out these kind of fish because again it's quite versatile and it doesn't smell because i think that's something that a lot of people face so there you are right i have um, what i have shared with you today is that most of us tend to reach for high sugar laden highly refined carbohydrate foods like baked goods etc desserts then we are feeling low sad upset right when we are going through a mood swing and what happens there after is that we crash and we don't feel so great after that so instead of doing that there are six foods that i have shared with you which i keep in my kitchen which can help you to avoid these kind of mood imbalances the first one was uh, dark chocolate and i'm sure you will like that check it out i've shared with you some links to buy some brands that you can check out the second uh, was fermented foods the third green tea fourth leafy greens fifth nuts and seeds and sixth fatty fish like salmon right so if you liked what you heard today in today's session make sure that you sign up for my newsletter which comes out every week um you know i've shared the link below so that you don't miss out on any of these events or any of my blog posts the blog post contains a lot more details so i'll see you once again next week